All right. Some people asked me to how to make the torn edge look like it was actually like ripped uh, and on multiple sides instead of just a single side. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've just done a quick mask on uh, my dog. So you can see before, after. And so it's not this most spectacular mask, but that's okay. So what I did is I duplicated the layer to start with. Then you're going to make sure that you choose one of your torn edge brushes if you're going to use the torn edge. So I'm just going to grab like this one. And then over here under window, there are brush settings. The brush settings will allow you to rotate your brush. Now with these types of brushes, I'd like to change my spacing just so I can see what the edges are. So that like right here, one of the things I can do, and this is going to be just experimenting. So be prepared to undo is I want to turn this brush so that it's like there. So I got a little bit more of an edge. And what I'm going to do is on the mask of this one, I'm going to turn that one off on the mask of this one. I'm going to just click. I flipped my color to try to create this little bit of an edge. So I'm going to get closer to his body and create that edge. Then I'm going to switch to another torn edge brush. If you can't see them, you can have this panel, uh, this panel option here. I'm not sure why it's not popping up. That used to be where you could go. Ah, oh, well, uh, you can see the thing down here. So just choose another one and just move your mouse over and then you can rotate it. I'm going to move my spacing so I can actually see it. So there's this little arrow right here. This crushes the brush and like pinches it basically. So just keep an eye on which one you want to actually use. I'm using the bracket keys. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to look to see, is there a way I can kind of follow along part of the mask that I've already made. And then there's this flip. So I could use that same brush, but it's going on the opposite way. Go down here. Starts to look like that's kind of torn a little bit. And I'm going to flip it the opposite way. And I'm going to flip my color. So I'm using the X key to flip flop the color. So I can start to see what that ends up looking like. Eh, not really digging it a hundred percent, but getting a little bit closer. Now I want to try to follow along with his ear and I'm going to reduce the size just a little bit. That's going to give me that odd edge because that is the edge of the brush. So I'm going to switch to a different one. So the idea is your eye is really good at picking up patterns. So that's why I'm switching the direction so much and I'm changing the brushes a bit and then we'll clean up the edges here in a second. What I'm doing is I'm looking at since this brush has a sharp like ending point off to the left and to the right, I'm trying to figure out how do I get it so it doesn't like get stuck up here by his ear. So that's just an experiment. Get it a little bit more. So I'm trying to make it look like I've torn that edge. Bring it back over a little bit. There we go. And then now I'm going to clip that edge off by rotating this. And I'm going to flip my color again. Now I want to follow kind of along his ear. So I'm just kind of eyeballing where this angle is compared to the angle of his ear. It's looking a little bit better. So it's almost like making a sloppier selection if you're going for this torn look. But we started first with having a pretty clean selection. There we go. Eh, don't really like that. I like having a little bit more of the background. So it makes it look more purposeful as opposed to just sloppy. And then I'll do the bottom. So not the most amazing look right now by itself, but this methodology of of going in and choosing a different brush. And then I'm noticing right up there by his ear, that's looking kind of nasty. 
So I'm going to take that, I'm going to reduce this down. Using that tip of the edge to be able to do that particular effect. Then, sorry, that clicking and talking is sometimes tricky. So it didn't really have a strong idea coming in. It was just more of a, can I use parts of the brush to make it look a little choppier? And then you can use that something like that if you wanted. You could even go in after you had something like that if you wanted to add in a little drop shadow or something to make it pop off of the background a little bit, depending on what kind of effect you're going for. That is a little too cheesy looking, so I'm going to leave that as it is. And then maybe what I can do to make it look more like a sticker or something is go in and add an effect and add a stroke. I'm going to change the color temporarily just so I can see it. Because you can start to see that's looking really crusty on those edges. So maybe that's not the best technique for us to use right now. So that would be one you could throw in there. If you want to do the sticker method, let me know and I'll, I'll show you some ways to get around that. But that essentially when you look at the actual mask, it's taking what you originally had. The reason I had you duplicate it is because you might decide later you liked your original selection without the torn edge so you'll always have a copy of that to go back to